my fellow gods and goddesses welcome back to my channel my name is Heather and today I will be recommending underrated backlisted books based on famous paintings <laughs> If you guys couldn't tell by my background, I really am a fan of art, especially Renaissance period art. I love oil paintings and tempura and just, it's just, it, it's my aesthetics. Birth of Venus, hello, you just saw it in my intro, like, which is my favorite painting of all time and we'll get to, we'll get to her, we'll get to her at the end. I'm an art ho who cannot do art, that is my brand. I wanted to kind of do a little little twist on book recommendations and kind of recommend books based on a, the meaning of a painting and that's what I'm going to do today. So let's get started. So the first painting I'm going to be talking about is one that everybody knows and that is Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. Everybody seen it. It's a gorgeous piece of impressionist art this painting I am going to be recommending it's one of my favorite series that I have yet to talk about on my channel and that is the Madgerie series by Danica Dark starting with Sterling. Sterling follows this girl named Zoe who after a tragic assault realizes that she has developed magical abilities and she is approached by this man named Justice who reveals to her that she is now a mage and a mage is an immortal who is made of light and because of that, I thought it was a good comparison to Starry Night because you got the lights and the stars and the night and you got the light and she's made of light and power and all that stuff. So I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I will say definitely trigger warnings for rape and assault at the very beginning of the book. Be aware of that. Um, but this series is holds a very special place in my heart. I adore it so much. The last book is the absolute best conclusion of a series I've ever read. Even better than Clockwork Princess, which is definitely up there. I feel like nobody's ever read it before. It's an indie published series and I just... It, it may not be the best written series, but I adore it so much. And if you don't read it for the story, at least read it for the smut because it's real good. So the next painting I'm going to recommend a book based off of is Scream by Edvard Munch. And again, a very popular painting. Everybody's seen it. Uh, this, the book I'm going to recommend for this is a bit of a stretch, but bear with me. And that is the Healer series by Maria V. Snyder. Snyder's books are becoming a bit more like popular on booktube, I've noticed, with a uh, poison study. I've seen quite a quite a few people read it and enjoy it, and every single time I see it, I'm like, read the Healer series, it's so good. The Healer series follows a girl named Avery, and she is able to uh, take on people's illnesses into her own and heal herself. Or for instance, if they have a cough, she will extract the cough from their bodies, put it into her own body, and heal herself from the cough. And rather than being appreciated for her gifts, she is hunted because in this land, a plague has over has taken over the world and, and healers were unable to cure this plague themselves because they too would die. And because of this, the world has blamed healers for this plague and they are thus hunted for their abilities. However, she is taken in and promised security and safety if she can heal the prince. The story is so good. There is kind of a hate to love romance in it. it the romance is just so amazing. This book was the first book to make me cry and still vividly remember the scene where I was bawling my eyes out and I don't remember anything in the books I read so if that if that doesn't say something there you go. Uh, the reason I kind of compared these two is just because the scream is, is a very chaotic uh, scene, the colors, the imagery, it's a very chaotic scene so I figured because of like the chaos with the 
um, with the uncertainty and the and and like the prosecution I thought it was uh, again it's a stretch but you know still great book great painting read it look at it the next painting is the kiss by Gustav Klimt and this one oh, it is just so gorgeous and it is such a romantic painting you can just he did such a good job of displaying emotion and just you, you just oh you can tell the two really love each other my interpretation there's kind of some resistance or there's some kind of tragedy with this scene and i as a reader i interpret this painting as kind of a forbidden romance i love a good forbidden romance and one series that has an incredible forbidden romance is the soul guardian series by kim richardson this is another series that nobody has talked about ever on booktube that i have never seen anybody talk about and this is one of the first series that i completely fell in love with this book follows a girl named kara and she has died and she wakes up in heaven and she finds out that she has been assigned to like the guardian sect of heaven because in heaven there are these different jobs that each of the angels take on and she has been assigned to the guardian sect of heaven and because she is a rookie in this guardian angel legion she is assigned to a petty officer and his name is david like many angel stories angels are forbidden to fall in love and stuff happens love happens drama mystery there's demons there's angels there's monkeys and elevators there's just it's really 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 good i highly recommend this series it's ex i just i adore it this next painting is probably the most iconic painting of all time and that is of course mona lisa by leonardo da vinci it is one with an extremely mysterious origin um nobody knows who the mona lisa is nobody knows what the purpose of it was <laughs> my old art professor gave a very bland and boring um, interpretation and that is just that she is looking on to her husband who is coming home because she is not veiled or having eccentric clothing or anything like that but that is just not as exciting as like having it be Leonardo da Vinci as a woman you know it's just not as exciting because of the mystery and the uncertainty of this painting i decided to go with grave mercy by robin lafers this has come back onto my radar because of julia from shakespeare and such she recently tweeted about how underrated this book was i highly agree it is one that not a lot of people have read or not a lot of people talk about Grave Mercy, it follows a girl named Isme. And after she runs away from an enraged marriage, she escapes to a coven of Saint Morton. This coven is not just any coven. They are assassins for the god of death. And if that doesn't make you want to read it, I don't, I don't know what to do with you, honestly. And you just need to you just need to leave because of the mystery and the assassins and all that stuff i thought you know doesn't mona lisa look like she's got some she's she's hiding something she could be a nun assassin like nun assassin waiting for her husband to come home eh, definitely gonna go assassin so the next painting is one that i have right here as well as on my body i have a tattoo of it. it is the creation of adam by michelangelo um this painting uh has a lot of uh different interpretations to it as all as all of these paintings do of course um there's a lot of speculation that it's about knowledge and because there's like the brain and everything i find that hard to believe but that's just me personally i interpret it as um displaying gods and humans relationship towards each other and how it is a very unstable uncertain 
um, relationship because you can see that Adam Splade is very sluggish, very um, uncertain, very just nonchalant, while God is very, of course, directive. And so I kind of interpret it as human's reluctancy towards accepting God's word and all that kind of stuff. And what better book to display that other than Heretics Anonymous by Katie Henry. This is one that I am reading currently and we follow Michael who is an atheist and but he is now attending a Catholic school. He goes to class, he thinks that he finally finds solidarity in somebody else because a girl stands up and questions the teachings of the of the sister and he thinks he's found some solidarity but in fact she is training to be a the first female catholic priest she introduce michael to this group of individuals who also don't fit the typical norm of the catholic school there is jewish representation there's feminism there's paganism there's different sects of Catholicism, um, all that kind of stuff, but Michael convinces them to create this journal called and calls Heretics Anonymous. It's just a perfect one to correlate with Creation of Adam. I couldn't exactly do this video without acknowledging Birth of Venus by Sandro Botticelli. Uh, if you couldn't tell, this is my favorite painting of all time. I adore it. Sandro Botticelli is my favorite painter. Uh, the way he captures mythology um, in, in works of art is just absolutely stunning. Uh, and he also does so much religious art as well. So I kind of just like to pair it together where he didn't separate them, he combined them. And I just love that. Well, birth of Venus, if you didn't know, it depicts the birth of humanism. And humanism, if you don't know, is like the the study of humans and the way our minds work, individualism, uh, education, enlightenment, all, all that kind of stuff that encompasses the renaissance and if you see zephyrus who is the god of winds is blowing Afro uh, aphrodite or venus in this case uh blowing her into the cloth of modernity because the woman on the left is trying to clothe her and thus that clothing is thus to symbolize a shift from myth to reality in a sense and so this painting is very much a one embodying a shift in one's identity and for this book i could do almost every single book in the world honestly could fit that description it's a very wide ambiguous concept that it i definitely could have been more specific but i really wanted to talk about this book and that is to kill a kingdom by alexander christo if you saw my bookish newbie tag you know that alexander christo i uh, I discovered her last year and I fell in love with her writing, fell in love with this book. It's five out of five stars for me. I love it so much. And To Kill a Kingdom is a retelling of The Little Mermaid and we follow the uh, Princess Lyra who is a siren and she has lived her whole life collecting the hearts of princes. It is not your Disney aerial fairy tale kind of story. She is an extremely murderous, brutal, individual however when she has gone against the wishes or <laughs> desires of her mother her mother curses her to become a human she has to steal the heart of a prince in a human form and not only is she hunting this prince's heart but this prince is also a renowned siren killer it is an extremely brutal and um dark story however it still manages to make you laugh and you just I just adore I adore the writing style and I adore this story so that is it for this video I really hope you guys enjoyed it please let me know down below if you want more of these book recs uh, slash painting 
videos. If you guys have any recommendations for future paintings, please let me know down below. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day.